Regents Chancellor Betty Rosa, thanks so much for joining us here on New York Now via Skype this week. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, anytime. So you are Chancellor of the Board of Regents, which is kind of this supervisory board of the state's education system. It's very important, but a lot of people only know Regents, obviously, as those tests that we took in June and December in high school. But the Board of Regents plays a pivotal role in education around the state. I'm wondering from your, from your position right now, what have you been hearing from educators from around the state during this time of the COVID-19 crisis? Because I have to assume that it's been extremely difficult for a lot of people and you've had to hear a lot of these uh, you know, troubles from people. Well, I want to start by saying that there's 17 of us. So we obviously cover the entire state. Um, and so the individual regions hear from their individual communities, um, superintendents, principals, stakeholders, parents and other advocacy groups. And so that the, the conversation and as you call hearing from is pretty expansive in terms yeah. of our knowledge. Um, so all of us are hearing from whether it's the big five, urban, suburban, rural, and we're listening and obviously not only hearing, but we're intimately working uh, with the various communi communities based on not only our regulatory issues, but also our guidance. So when you're looking forward, obviously right now the situation is very uncertain. And we know in summer that summer school is going to be distance learning. We don't know what's happening in the fall. Help my viewers kind of understand where you play a role there. Is the Board of Regents involved in the decision to keep schools distant in the fall or is that in the hands of the governor and the legislature how i guess where does the responsibility fall there well from from a constitutional authority it is the responsibility of the department of education uh and the board of regents it is um the probably all educational issues we are intimately involved in those decisions obviously during this crisis we are working closely to make sure that we align our best thinking as educators and our best thinking in terms of the safety, uh, issues of health and safety through the Department of, 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 of um, Health. And also we're looking at um, all the issues that are very, very specific to children and all the crisis, social, emotional, mental health um, not just the academic part of, of the educational issues that we're struggling, meals, dealing with child care, as you well know that the governor has um, um, pretty much asked us to engage with communities, feeding, child care, both road, uh, the, the entire academic aspect of this, so that we are intimately involved in all the decisions that pertain to schools, and communities as far as our children. So do you think it's too early to make that decision on the fall um, semester, I guess, for lack of a better word, the start of the next school year? Do you think it's too soon right now to make that decision on distance learning? Um, I assume that there are just several factors that you have to consider before you decide whether to send students back. Well, we're actually working very closely. We have been for the last, with staff, uh, for the last um, I would say with the last couple of weeks, we have been engaging in conversations. We have put together a plan, which we have, uh, I, I would say in the last week, have been uh, having internal discussions uh, with our regional uh, design. We have a task force um, and that task force is very much focused on the re-entry and opening bell and looking at on uh, both working with uh, West Ed, which is um, our partner in research, working with um, the various organizations to support looking at the models, looking at the options, but making sure that the issue of health and safety is uh, um, on the forefront of all of our decisions for September. So no, it's not, we started already this com these conversations, this work. We have been intimately involved with looking at other models 
in other places such as Denmark, Singapore, Norway, places that have already opened and the kinds of strategies that they have used along with uh, the kinds of concerns um, and the models that they have engaged in to ensure that children are back um, to teaching and learning. You know, thinking about strategies, the governor a few weeks ago came out with not really a proposal, but more of a broader strategy idea where he wanted to, uh, quote, he's calling it, quote, reimagine education. And I know that that hasn't set well with teachers, mostly because we don't really know what it means. We don't know if he wants to re-examine how the entire education system works or if it's just small changes here and there. Um, what do you think about that? Have, have you had any conversations with the governor or the, the executive branch of government, um, not yourself included obviously, about what that would mean to reimagine education and do you think that that's a good idea? Well, for, first of all, I think that um, we, are, we are looking at the, the, our entire conversation is obviously been on recovery, rebuilding, and reinventing. And that's basically what we've been focused on. And that pretty much aligns with some of the thinking that the uh, task force on reimagining is focused on. But our focus has been on reopening schools. And um, I, I don't believe, and I know our commissioner is on the task force. I don't believe that, uh, I think they've had one meeting so I don't think that we have much information, but we are prepared, as we did say in our um, press release, that we are prepared to continue our work on reopening and share it across the board. How does funding play into all of this? Because the Board of Regents earlier this year recommended that the state add $2 billion in education spending statewide, which may, would make a huge impact in a lot of schools. Obviously, because of finances, the legislature and the governor kept school aid flat and now we're looking at a potential 20% of schools across the board. So as we move forward, I guess, how do you accomplish the goals that you want to accomplish, keeping education top class in New York, while, I guess, doing more with less? How do you accomplish that moving forward, especially during these times that are so uncertain? Well, I think you, you, you hit the nail on the head by saying uncertain times. The financial, we are in a financial meltdown, and so, this is going to be very challenging, even at this point, in terms of trying to do more with less. Um, that's why the whole issue of reimagining, it's very, very challenging and very difficult right now, because we really have to focus on even uh, the bare, bare basics of some of the issues that we have to think about when it comes to social distancing, when it comes to keeping our kids uh, safe, making sure that our schools are ready, um, the kinds of models we have to look at. These, all of these issues, all of these um, connections are going to need investment. And if, if we are committed to making sure, particularly for uh, our most vulnerable students, we really need to make sure that the investments are there. And it's very hard to think that on the one hand, we have to do more, um, whether it's transportation, whether, you know, when, when we look at the issue of what uh, typical school, schools have been designed for social uh, purposes, as well as the academics. The whole issue of social distancing is, is the complete opposite of what schools, how schools have been designed. So rethinking how we are going to do this, how do we, how do we, uh, limit movement? How do we have um, conditions that we know have to adhere to uh, health and safety? How do we do that given some of our high schools and some of our elementary schools that have large classes? And that um, that is a challenge for all of us, which is why we're engaged in this work right now to ensure that we come up with models that help us at least get to a place that we can continue this work. Certainly the issue of remote uh, teaching and learning is going to be a variable um, in the conversation, but we also have to think about year round schools, which again is another expense. So it's very, very hard to accomplish and support the issue of teaching our children 
without the um, the funding and the investment. Do you think all of that, because this is so interesting, do you think that all of that, when you talk about things like year-round schools and looking at how to change things going forward, do you think that playing into that might be, and you know, I'm just spitballing, so you don't have to say anything concrete, but do you think that something to be considered maybe like changes in curriculum from what we were doing before, and maybe as a result, changes in evaluating teachers? I, mean, I could see so many different routes to this that, that you would have to consider going forward to not really overhaul the system, but make some tweaks to keep everything safe for everybody. Well, I think tweaks for me uh, would mean uh, tinkering around the edges. Uh, mm. we, are, we are going to be facing uh, not only the financial issues, but we're going to be facing uh, a reopening with even a fear of another um, possibility of another impact on, on another phase of this, which would really uh, add another burden to what's already a crisis. So I think, um, I, I don't think that we can look at this situation with tinkering. I think we have to look at the situation taking a deep dive. This is not about snorkeling. This is about really taking a deep dive into how we keep our kids safe. How do we continue to educate them? How do we assure parents that their children are going to be safe in these spaces? How do we even think about issues of repurposing spaces? All of these things are part of the uh, type of work that we're going to have to, and these are tough conversations and these are tough decisions. But in a crisis like this, we have to take these um, into the next phase of creating opportunities um, of how do we still accomplish a most important issue, keeping our kids safe, the social, emotional, the mental health. We have a lot of kids that I'm sure at this point uh, are, are experiencing trauma and we, we're going to need to address those issues, particularly in poor and disadvantaged communities. Right, right, there's just so many moving parts of this to consider. Um, that's all the time we have, but I wish you luck on this. It's obviously a huge, huge endeavor. And thank you so much for joining us here on New York Now, Chancellor Rosa from the Board of Regents. Thank you for having me.